All right, so in this video today, I'm removing my plugs, okay? I'm gonna upgrade the wiring so it's up to code. Um, basically, what I've gotta do is take these two plugs, which are on one circuit, and they're wired a little uniquely. It's on a three wire, and I don't like that. In today's code, we use 12 too, and we can join as part of a series. So we're gonna go ahead and do that, and we're gonna have to find out, I'd like to have a plug kind of in the middle. The idea of a plug on a counter, code wants it every four feet of countertop, okay? And so we wanna look for something in the middle here. That's a little bit more convenient. I'm just gonna use my stud finder. Identify, that's a lousy spot. There it is, there's the other side. So there's my stud. I'm gonna use these plastic boxes, and if I put it mounted there, that'll be good. So what I wanna do first is trace the new location, and we're gonna go eight inches off the counter, and that'll be my box. So before I know exactly where it's gonna go, there is my stud right there, okay? So now I know where my stud is, know where my corner's gonna go. These boxes are all interior boxes, which means that the screw locations are inside the hole. So I can cut this in advance and then place the box. Important when you're cutting through, just use the tip. If there are other wires in there, you don't want to run the risk of cutting through them. And then when we get to where the edge is, I can just use my knife. There we go. Yeah, this whole wall of spray foam. Love the spray foam. You know, everybody talks about spray foam like it's some sort of a miracle cure. But at the end of the day, it is a real pain in the butt to deal with when you're making modifications. I pity the renovators who are gonna be out here working on houses 40 years from now trying to make modifications. Wow, that's gonna be a real frustration for them. <sighs> you gotta be kidding me. All right, well, this is why we make these videos. We run into problems. That blue wire, I can't move, and it's not enough room for my box. So I've gotta go lower than this now. So now we've gotta cut a bigger hole. That just means more patching. It's not the end of the world. Let's go to here. And another blue wire. Oi, 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 how many wires did they stick in this wall? Not my day. <laughs> All right, let's just take a look. So I've got wires that are in the way. I've only got two inches. Now, even the original box is two and a half inches thick. When at first you don't succeed, you try again. Let's go lower. We gotta get this thing in here. The reason I'm starting here is because behind this wall is open, it's a mechanical room. And the wall's right around here somewhere. So I'm flying blind. This plug I also wanna move, but at least I can see the framing, so that'll be easy. This is just maddening. Oh, I don't feel any wires this time, that's good. Pop some more foam here. We have a spot where we can do this. All right, now, I bought this kind of box because I'm doing retrofit. But what I can't do is I can't, well, I can use this fin. I'm gonna have to throw one screw through the side here. So first thing I gotta do is get my grinder, get rid of my tabs, modify the box. All right, so these boxes are designed for new construction and I already have drywall, so I gotta... So now my box will fit. That's a start, eh? The other thing I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need a hole through this stud to run the wire. What we're gonna find out here is that because I can't see anything and it's all spray foamed, I'm gonna to have to clean all this out just so that I can have access to, to run my wire. Good news is it's only drywall. I'm going to need access over to here. Now I've obviously turned off the breaker. It's always a good idea. And there's my access into that mechanical room. Okay. All right, we gotta remove the plug. This box has to be 
removed or part of the finished wall. And in this case, it's going to be easier to make this part of the finished wall. I need more room to work. We're going to leave that box when we put the new drywall on. But we are going to drill another hole for access for the wire. So I'm taking off the cover, moving the second plug now. So same thing, only different here, right? Let's use the stud finder. Got my location. Trick here now is to mount the box. Same height as the other one off the counter. Dude, that is two and three quarters. Let's just stick this through here and we'll see if we have access on the other side. Oh yeah, yeah, I can put a box there. I know I don't have a wire there, that's good. Good, so I'm gonna mount this from the other side. That's my stud, mounting it that way, sticking through the hole. And these tabs will come up to the drywall. These ones are in the way. We'll just push it through and then mount it in. Okay, so I'm gonna get this wire through the wall from one plug to the next. And I wanna have about a foot on each end. Okay, just bend it real quick when you're measuring, you know where to cut. There we go, this is only two wire. It's black and white, but it's a thicker gauge, so it carries more power. That's why you can run two plugs on it. We're gonna take about eight inches of this sheathing, run it against the copper lead. The reason I'm doing this, so that you can see, on these boxes, this piece of metal connects to the ground screws, okay? So when you're taking your fixture, which is the metal, and you screw that with the metal screw, this connects the ground to the plug. All right, so you're already grounded. Just to be safe though, you can wrap the ground screw and then bring this out and run it over to the green. And that's what I like to do, okay? Now, for simplicity, I'll show you how this box works. And you can get these so they have a foam on the back, so it's uh, more like a sound proofing, but you push them in. <laughs> okay. You bend, and then you straighten out, and then they start to curl. And you can pull it through the box. All right. And you just feed it in until you're cabling your sheathing, about a half an inch on the inside. You take this ground wire around that screw, and then tighten it in. You take your wires, and you curl them all up into the box. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fish this through the hole. Here we go. We're going to get this where we want it. And I'm going to leave this just a little bit proud because I'm going to be backsplash tile as well. And we're going to just take a couple flooring screws and screw that box right to the stud on the inside. Situation like this, you need a real bit, right? Check this out. Okay, there we go, one and two. When the electrical inspector comes, because I'm just gonna call in for a permit real quick, they're gonna go like this, make sure the ground wires are connected to the screw. They're gonna wanna see that these holes are drilled um, at least an inch and a half from the surface of the wood. If they're not, you have to put metal protector plates over top, so I'm gonna need that in both of these situations, all right? So I'll make the phone call, I'll make the arrangement, and I'll grab those plates and stick them on. And really, they want to see the wire going all the way back to the source of where your panel is. You don't have to connect to the panel for your rough -in inspection. You just have to have the supply line go, oh, I'm going to bring this wire to this box, and a new wire from here all the way back hanging by the electrical panel. That's all they want, all right? And you can pass a rough-in electrical. You can get on with finishing. And if you're like me, because of what's going on in my panel at the church here, it's a little complicated. I'm going to call an electrician and do the connection. But I can get the rough end done all by myself, do all this work, make the phone call, and they can come and inspect this whenever they want. I just can't put the plugs on until it's inspected. Now that is obviously a lot more wire than I need for this job. We'll just cut that back to something more reasonable. And curl this up. There we go. Now my panel is about uh, four feet from that plug on that long this wall, right here. So I've still got 15, 20 feet wire. 
what I'm going to literally do is I'm going to cut my sheath in here, stick this wire into the box, and just leave it hanging inside the room. As long as an electrical inspector can see that you have enough wire to go to the panel, and it's inside the room where the panel is, then they can pass your rough in knowing that they can pass or inspect the rest of the wiring and the staples and all those rules at a later date before they give you the final. So once I stick this in, I can just leave this hanging on the ground. I'm officially roughed in. Done. Okay, that's how you move plugs when you're working at home. Now where I am in Ontario, I can just call up the ESA, the Electrical Safety Authority, and they'll open a permit for me, give them my credit card number, they'll charge me 65 bucks or whatever for the two plugs. I'll have an inspector out here in the next few days. He'll pass the rough in, and in the meantime, I can actually take pictures of the steel plates, okay? And then I can close this wall right away, get on with my day, hang my cabinets, do my backsplash, build my rest of my countertop. If you're not following us along on this journey, then consider checking out the link right here. We've taken this old 1980 kitchen stick frame. We're repurposing the cabinets, tiling the countertop, and building a functional kitchen. Cheers till next time.